the topic I want to talk about is the reproducibility. So reproducibility basically can can your can others reproduce your research? Or even can you can you reproduce your own research five years later? <laughs> um so according to a few research on nature or science, um the science is facing reproducibility reproduced the crisis. So over uh, seven percent of the research cannot be reproduced by their peers, uh, scholars, and over 50% cannot reproduce their own research. Um, I believe it. This is quite true. And think about the Maxon user interface. Do you remember what you select or not select 10 years ago, maybe five years ago? Or maybe you already delayed or moved around your folder, in the input folder. Right, there's a, a lot of things cannot be easily reproduced. And this would lead to uncertainties in our science in general. So it is important. And where we're looking at the, I think this product underestimation of paper that use Maxon, but there's an exponential increase of paper that use Maxon to do their research. So the, my, my question is, how many of them are reproducible? And then if they are not reproducible, then how, how should we improve the reproducibility of our field? Um, or to, to answer the first question, I want to do a few, a small kind of practice. We can look at a few examples and you can read it and we can comment on that. Comment on the details on what do you think of the reproducibility of this paper. So uh, those are the published papers from journals with high impact factors. I do not doubt they're the science part. We're only commenting on the reproducibility, okay? And forgive me if I picked your paper just by chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's an example. That's a paragraph that they were talking about the niche modeling. Uh, I'll give you a few minutes to read it. Okay, uh, to be fair, we, we should look at their appendix, right? So I have that. <laughs> look, that that's their appendix that are relevant to this paragraph. They have a current state on the top, then the variable they used. Okay, uh, let's go back. So what do you think? Which part do you think is not reproducible or that could be improved? Yes, please. Well, there's plenty of the parameterization in the left side. So I don't know what the regularization parameter is. I don't know what number of batch I'm going to use. Yeah. Which is reproducible. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. If they do not say, then we. Yeah, th that's important. If they do not say, we can only guess. Yeah, this is what all they have. So we don't know what it is. We'll explain I think maybe the mission will claim. So they have a citation. They have a citation over here. However, we know that Max, no, World Claim have a version 2 now. So originally, by default, we can say it's OK, version 1. That's the only version. But now, for the new version. And then I also said, oh, please, I, I saw that you raised your hand. So some of these things could be results, right? If you're picking a, you're doing different modeling efforts and you pick a threshold, that's kind of a result because the computer is giving you that threshold that you need to compute from. So some of these are maybe a little bit gray, which is just doing the method, which is a result of decisions you make over your software. Uh, so you're guessing that the threshold is in the results sec section. Um, Yeah, maybe that that's one possible. Oh, oh please. <laughs> yeah, they have something about that. They're, they're from JBIF, and that's that's it. <laughs> but you you are right. There's no date. There's no year. When is that collection? Is that when you are looking at the Armadillo data? The earliest one is in the 18. Century. Yeah, that's a good point. And there's no digitization there. <laughs> yeah, so where are those background of samples generated? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, um, so I, I catch a bunch of things. Most of them are already mentioned. The, the maximum version, then where is this? Last glacial maximum data obtained. There is no citation. We can only guess. And then they have the they include they include some strong correlation variables. Then my question is, if if two variables are correlated, which one do you throw away? Right? Is it a random or is there is a preference? Those are not reproducible. If you do not say it, nobody know. And this is a version of the maxim. And here's another example that I found. It is published. It's a high impact factor journal. We're only talking about the reproducibility. Um, we, we already we'll, we'll catch up the maximum version scene. And I also want to highlight the the other evaluation index, the partial AUC. That's awesome. You use it, that's great. But as Tom or Mona mentioned that there's a threshold for that. So, and also for TSS, you have to know, you have to say the threshold first, and then you can get our results. So if you do not say it, we can only guess, and we can only infer how reliable your 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 per your research is. And in the next example, of uh, I'll let you read this first, and then we can maybe you're gonna have more ideas.
Okay, to be fair, we have to look at their appendix. Yeah, they provide their uh, kind of the specimen ID, the, the coordinate. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, those environment, environmental variables, you have to, as we demonstrated earlier, you can do a lot of things to those layers. Yeah. Anything you want to comment on? Yes. It is a, a long table. I only c get a few of that. It's hard to show it. But that's the structure of that table. OK, uh, there's one thing I want to comment on is they use Biomalt too. The, the good thing is it provides a version. And but th so they use non algorithms. We know that Maxine have a lot of parameters that you can play with, and you have you have nine models. You provide zero parameter. Say so, okay for GLM, we you know that we can set up Y as a response to a structure of X. Then what is that? Right, without saying what is that model, how can people know what you have done? And I think I know that bell mode has a lot of default parameters. You can just run a model, but even you use the default, you have to say it. And and preferably you, you should provide justifications. And and also they use the TSS, and we know that TSS is a threshold dependent evaluation metrics. So obviously a threshold of 10% omission rate and 20% omission rate are going to give you different results. And I mean, without knowing all of that, how can people reproduce your results? And so here's the thing I think we should think about when we write our manuscript, or maybe if we do the model. So how, when, where did you get occurrence data and climate data? And did you clean up your data? And how and why? And and what is the spatial temporal coverage of your data? And not to mention you match them, but you have to tell us what is that coverage. I mean that that will we all know, understand that that will influence the model quality. And also, uh, what is the basis of your your, your data? Say the the current data. There are human observations. There are specimens. There are even fossil records. If you just di directly download data from JBF, and are you going to use fossil data for for modeling the current distribution? And that's something not reasonable. So that should be avoided. And regarding your model, so you have to basically specify what algorithm, what is the version, and what is your training area. Then what is the number of records you use for the background points, and what variable did you use and how you select those variables? I mean, regardless if it's the best of practice or not, you have to justify. And in terms of evaluating your model, then you have to say how you select your testing data. Is it a random selection? Is it by block selection? Or how did you do it? And in terms of the, the, the map, you get the raw outputs, and sometimes people show the, a binary output. So there's a the threshold involved. Then what is that threshold? What is that threshold and how is that selected? And for the model, for the for the algorithm, you may you may use the default parameter, but if you use it, you have to say it. Otherwise you have to justify what have you changed. And and also for Max Sense, so clamping is by default attended on. 
And if you're imagining this response curve and when clamping will happen, that's a, it can make a big difference. So that's something you should pay attention to and also record what you have did, what you have done. And I would also suggest that extrapolation, as Tom just mentioned, you maybe potentially may quantify how much extrapolation you have done to kind of quantify what's the difference between your training data and testing data. So I believe all those uh, problems are necessary to, to mention in order to make other, make, make your research reproducible. And I think to, to look forward, th those pa new packages developed by Tomflab and also the package by called Wallace. <laughs> um, so all those packages are can potentially keep track of all those different settings. And that may help us make reproducible models. And also, as I just demonstrated in our script, you record every step that you have ever done, and then you would, you would understand what you have ever done maybe one or two years later. And that may help you re improve our reproducibility. So um, I, I hope next time when, when you do a model or when you review our modeling paper, well, maybe try to think about this. I'll try to push for those details. I think that will be helpful for us in general.